Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this opportunity that we have to meet together as friends and family, for Mary, for the wonderful life that she led. We're so grateful for the opportunity that we have to be related to her and for the example that she gave to us. We're very grateful, Heavenly Father, for the gospel and for the opportunity that we have to be sealed to her. And Father, we're so grateful for it, the many blessings that we have. We're grateful for this time that we have to live on the earth, where we have a, a true prophet to lead us and guide us, and for all of the revelations that we have to help us to know the true purpose of why we're here on the earth. This time we'd ask you to help us, so we can have thy spirit with us, that we might be able to feel thy love and be able to let our grandma, mother, and know how much we love her and appreciate everything she did for us. Please help us to travel in safety as we leave this day as well. And these things we thank thee for and pray for in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen. David Johnson, the son, will favor us with a musical number and he'll introduce it. After which, uh, we've asked uh, the three daughters, Janice, Teresa, and Trudy, um, and they will introduce what they will be doing. David. It was there in my home that I learned long ago the lessons that carried me through all the trials and strife that stood in my path as from child to man I grew. It was there in my home that I learned how to play, how to work and the meaning of love. I learned from example the power of prayer. I grew close to my father family so close how we laughed how we sang how we prayed I learned from my family the lessons of life and I grew with my mind unafraid then on that clear spring morning I went to the grove as a youth I needed to have an answer I went in search of truth and after that glorious moment when they had talked to me I rose from my knees I ran up the path I wanted the world to see that the lessons I'd learned through those 14 years were not meant for me alone I knew what to do I knew where to go, I went home, I went home, I went home. The original program did not have us following Dave, so <laughs> we don't vouch for our ability now to do this. <clears throat> okay. 
Mother believed in miracles. She was a woman of magnificent faith in Heavenly Father. She learned early in her life of the power of the priesthood and prayer. Mom was not defined by the osteomyelitis of her childhood and the many years of suffering, nor by frequent outbreaks of psoriasis endured without the benefit of today's designer drugs, nor by her painful bunions. Mom loved her parents, Rose Gardner and Nate Abbott. She loved her sisters, Hermes and Maxine, her brothers, Brent, Max, Keith, Royal, Myron, and Richard. Two of her mother's babies died in infancy, and mother especially remembered little David Owen. Mother wrote, quote, I grew up in a family with spiritual parents who were worthy to have their prayers answered. And it is because of them that many miracles came to pass in my life. I loved my parents and brothers and sisters dearly. Mother sang her way through our lives. She sang in Christmas and Easter cantatas. She sang the role of the angel at the tomb. My own testimony was firmly planted in the soil of these words. <laughs> oh, fear not ye. Oh, fear not ye, for I know whom ye seek, the Lord crucified. He is not here, he is risen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Our mom never allowed arguments or name calling to last. She interrupted our clamor by bursting into song. Let us off speak kind words to each other at home or wherever we may be. Or there is beauty all around when there's love at home. Song and Prayer, Promised Valley, Messiah, Musical Kindergarten, Ward Choir, Road Shows, Workshops, Recitals, 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 <laughs> Family Singing Around the Piano, Mama Singing Soprano, Daddy Singing Bass, the rest of us singing along, finding our voices. She was a great booster of her children, encouraging their gifts and talents looking for opportunities to help them succeed. Other girls went shopping for school clothes, Easter dresses, Halloween costumes, and special events. We had our own fashion designer, alterations expert, and shopper, Mother. I remember my favorite dress in first grade. I called it my piggy dress because it had the cutest little pocket cutouts of pigs. Mother often made her daughter's clothes so they looked alike. One Easter, Mother and Aunt Alberta O'Brien conceived to make all of the family daughters look alike dresses. The sons, not so much. <laughs> Mom also designed her home. She made her own curtains, sofa, and chair covers, and never one to waste anything, used the scraps from her projects for the spreads that covered our beds. Quite simply, she was an expert seamstress. Did we say that Mom was a fabulous cook? She loved to feed people. No one could drop in for a visit without sitting down to a snack, a treat of some kind. Even after she moved to Fairfield Village, she was so happy to have her little kitchen. She kept her freezer full of ice cream bars and pies. She kept cookies in her cupboard, especially for visitors. The ledge beside the door to her apartment was always decorated with items for the season, and this included candy. Passers-by were always welcome. Mom served legendary several course dinners. We ate on Noritake China that Dad brought to her from Japan. We drank from crystal glasses. Each place setting was exactly so. We learned eat to the left, drink to the right, as she taught us to set the table properly. If it was worth doing, it was worth doing right. We did have such wonderful meals and treats. German chocolate cake, Donna Walker sheet cake, hand-dipped Christmas chocolates, Aunt Hermes's toffee, Danish pastry on Christmas morning, fried scones made from leftover bread dough, and Mexican food that she learned to make when Dad was stationed in Tucson, Arizona. We also lived by another of her mottos, waste not, want not. She served leftover cream of wheat, and I might add any cereal that was left over, <laughs> chilled and cut into slices, fried in butter, and served with maple syrup. A hearty breakfast of leftovers on a cold morning. 
delicious. <laughs> Mother always got dressed for her day. Her hair and nails were done, makeup applied. At home or abroad, she dressed up for the occasion. Dad always said she was the most beautiful woman in the room. <clears throat> Mom and Dad, E.T. and Mary, Bishop and Sister Johnson, Grandpa and Grandma, Mr. and Mrs. Our parents were a team, well yoked, even with Dad's Air Force assignments, which took him to far off lands and sometimes secret assignments. For years, Dad was the traveler and Mom was at home. When her opportunities came, she began to travel far and wide. Mom and I planned many trips for Daughters of Utah Pioneers. She loved our pioneer heritage and delighted in offering an opportunity for others to share in journeys to the cradles of our religion and homelands. Sometimes we were accompanied by Trudy and or Teresa and Jenny Johnson. Boston, New York, Ontario, London, Copenhagen, the fjords of Norway, Stockholm, Vienna, Lucerne, Dublin. She offered the journey of a lifetime to so many women who never could have dreamed of such a privilege in any other way. She loved to discover new places and learn about other cultures. She visited Robin Etsuko in Japan. She was with Jim and Sue in Spain. She enjoyed cruises and took advantage of every activity those little vacations offered, especially if the activity involved grandparents. She loved bragging rights, having more grandchildren than anyone else. Grandchildren. Yes, she loved those grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and they loved her back. How can you beat Captain Crunch Berries for breakfast, giant boxes of Legos in the basement, playing three deep in the backyard, trips to Lagoon and Hogel Zoo, sleepovers, gifts in the mail, board games, family picnics, personal tours of the DUP Museum. Nothing was institutional. It was always personal with Grandma Johnson. When she was coming to the end of her life and her family was allowed to visit, Many were anxious to give her one final embrace. Granddaughters Annie and Joe saw that she grew restless while they were with her. She appeared to be trying to get out of her wheelchair and they decided that she must have been anxious to get up and fix them something to eat. Mom was a friend to everyone in the sincerest ways. She was a people person because she was interested in people. She cared. Another truism that she relied on to teach us her children was sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me she avoided the bad habit of taking offense to her way of thinking life was too short to spend time feeling sorry for yourself her friendships were not perfect but that didn't ever get in the way of the friendship mom was a woman full of light and joy she carried these strong characteristics throughout her life in a section of the personal history she was writing for her posterity, she listed two lessons that she had been taught all of her life. One, cherish your families as never before and go to great lengths to keep your promises. <coughs> Two, be thankful and grateful for everything you have and don't worry about things you don't have. Mother then added her own feelings. These are lessons I have been taught all of my life and I have tried to live by them. But sometimes I have fallen short of that goal. I want you to know though that I have been blessed with a faithful spirit and I do recognize many miraculous things have happened to me in my life. When I have had serious decisions to make and I haven't known where to turn, I have turned to my pilot and he has never failed me. The answers have not always been the ones I thought I should have, but they have always come. The words of one particular song that I often heard mom sing keeps running through my head. Rest, rest to the weary, peace, peace to the soul. Though life may be dreary, earth is not our goal. Oh, lay down your burdens, Oh, come unto me. Mom, you lived a great life. Not always easy, but you were the center of everything we did. Supportive and fiercely loyal to each of us. This past year, life was dreary and you became weary. 
Now you have laid down your burdens and can have peace. We will miss you, but we rejoice that you are with dad, your sisters, brothers, and parents, and all who have preceded you. We look forward to when we can again have a grand reunion with all of us together. About uh, two years ago, around Christmas time, I was at the Johnson family Christmas gathering, and um, toward the end of, the, of our little family party, I noticed uh, mom was the center of attention there in the gym, which is not unusual because she was usually the main event, the main ticket at our family gatherings. But a number of the grandchildren and great-grandchildren, probably about age 15 or 14 down, were around grandma. And my first impression was, oh, come on, handing out candy to the grandkids again, Mom? But as I, as I observed, these young kids, about a dozen to two dozen of them, were lined up with their smartphones, having their pictures one at a time taken with Grandma. And I thought that was quite a remarkable sight to see the admiration and how much these young people revered their grandmother. About a year ago, when mom was living at the apartment there in Layton, the uh, retirement apartment, I was having a conversation with her and things kind of went quiet. So I rather sheepishly threw out a question, mom, in the twilight of your ear years, um, what is it you would like to have most right this time in your life? And without hesitation, she said, I want to be with my children. And at that time, you know, there were a number of us living close by, and we often visited. There were grandkids visiting. And I said, Mom, but you get visits all the time. And she clarified by saying, no, I want my seven children together with me one more time. And I didn't, I didn't respond, but I thought, may not happen on this side of the veil. But, The sealing powers promise that mom's wish will be fulfilled. In uh, Doctrine and Covenants, section 132, verse 46, it says, Whatsoever you seal on earth shall be sealed in heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be eternally bound in the heavens. Again, mom's wish will be fulfilled. I'm certain of that. So let me read from DNC section 2, verses 2 and 3. Now you'll recognize this because this is Moroni, the angel Moroni speaking to Joseph Smith. And um, this is just a part of it, obviously, but it must be important because he did it four different times. And he shall plant in the hearts of the children the promises made to the fathers, and the hearts of the children shall turn to their fathers. If it were not so, the whole earth would be utterly wasted at his coming. And my understanding is that is to be taken literally and not metaphorically. So we have an obligation to seek out our kindred dead. Mom understood this. She loved temple work. She loved genealogy. She had a genuine pride in her family. And around our household, names such as Gardner, Snow, Abbott, Levitt were familiar names to us as we grew up because mom would often regale us with tales, stories of her childhood, of her grandparents, of her great-grandparents. According to President Russell M. Nelson, our limited perspective would be enlarged if we could witness the reunion on the other side of the veil, when doors of death open to those returning home. And from Alma chapter 40, the spirits of those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace. So mom has returned home. 
And there's no question that she's becoming reacquainted with, with her ancestors. For example, her great-grandmothers, Abigail Smith Abbott and Chloe Snow Gardner. And it's very probable that uh, she may be uh, in conversation and talking, maybe a little giggling if you're allowed to giggle beyond the veil with her two of her favorite people. That would be her sisters, Hermes and Maxine. And now a final word about atonement. And let me read from Elder Tad Callister. The atonement of Jesus Christ outweighs, surpasses, and transcends every mortal event, every new discovery, and every acquisition of knowledge. For without the atonement, all else in life is meaningless. The atonement gives us a hope for a better world and faith that we will again be together in the eternal world. I testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a beautiful day, isn't it? That's a great group of people, too. The Johnson family. I love them. And uh, yesterday we had a little sprinkle, but today it's, it's just gorgeous. If you can't hear me, come in a little closer. Okay. <clears throat> what an honor it was for me to have Janice call and ask if I would uh, share a few minutes with you about the life of uh, your mother and my sister and your grandmother, etc. You see, I was fortunate enough to, live, uh, to have lived with Mary and Drew for quite a few years, more than anybody else in the family, for sure. I loved her like my own mother. I, in fact, I loved her so much, I, we named our firstborn child after her, Mary Lynn. There she is now. Oh, is that Chris? Oh, <laughs> this is my wife, Susan. I had the privilege of living uh, together with Mary in dusty Bunkerville. Wasn't that dusty? Didn't know. Uh, then on the farm in Nampa, and it wasn't Cuna, it was Nampa, for several years and later in Tucson, Arizona. In our retirement years, we built, both built homes in Dixie and we've enjoyed those for quite a long time now. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about a few of the, the Christ-like uh, characteristics of Mary. She was, uh, she was an angel. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 12 and, verses 12 and 13, we read, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then, we, then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. The greatest of these is charity. I know a lot about Mary's faith. She learned very early in life that she needed to exercise a lot of faith along with her family. When at a very young age she struggled, has been mentioned with osteomyelitis, a very painful bone disease. Uh, the same that Joseph Smith had as a young boy. Um, most doctors did not even know how to treat it. Her faith and that of her family and doctors eventually brought her back to health. Her faith was a way of life and, and it is reflected in all of her actions and her communications. She loved the gospel and served with honor wherever she was or was called, or whenever she was called. For hope, I ho I'm sure you know that for various reasons, Mary and True had not yet been sealed in the temple. She lived on hope for many years, many years, and such a sealing could that such a sealing could happen. In Tucson, while True was on duty, and the kids were in bed. Mary and I would gather, sit together around the kitchen table, and many nights it was her talking about the, the great hope she had that they could eventually be sealed. And she had a plan. True didn't mingle with church members that much then, 
but she got some real good friends that she thought true would enjoy being with her husbands. And it worked. And it, he got very active and involved. And by golly, uh, True and Mary were sealed along with many of you children in the St. George Temple on December 22nd, 1956. A very joyous Christmas present. Mary had charity. She loved her Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. During all our times together, I have never known Mary to exhibit the pure love of Christ. I've, I have known Mary to exhibit the pure love of Christ with those with whom she associated. Family, members of the church, and friends alike. I visited with her often in St. George. I never heard her utter a disrespectful or unkind thought or criticism about anyone, not her parents, children, siblings, church leaders, or friends. Mary had compassion. Where's Trudy? Oh, there you are. Mary's experience with illnesses and other life experience helped her develop compassion for others. For example, while True was away on duty again, Mary and her firstborn, Trudy, lived with us for a while. Trudy was born with a condition of a club foot, right? It required Mary to perform a treatment, twisting her foot and leg every day until this little baby would scream with pain. I was always with her, almost always beside her, because it hurt me so much too. It required Mary to, uh, imagine how difficult that would be for a mother to cause that much pain to her little baby every day. It was so painful that both of them and I shed a few tears too because it was hard to take. Education, like <clears throat> all of her siblings, she longed to further her education by attending college, but finances were diff difficult to come by on farm income. I think at that time, Dad made $125 a month, and he was the highest paid in his town. So she did babysitting and housework in exchange for wages and room and board, so she would have the money to attend beauty school. She obtained her license in record time and became one of the most highly requested operators in her shop. As mentioned in the obituary, she went on later in life to expand her education by attending university classes. Speaking of life on the farm, Mary worked hard and certainly did her share of the chores around the house. But I don't ever remember her milking a cow or driving the tractor. Well, that wasn't her choice. You see, Daddy didn't allow her to do men's work, but she became very proficient as a homemaker. Mary was a beautiful young woman. She was popular among her friends and had many talents and many dates. As a young woman, she led the ward choir. And she thinks she was only 19 or 20 in Nampa. She led the ward choir, taught my Sunday school class, and many other things, I'm sure. She had a beautiful singing voice, as did her two sisters, Maxine and Hermes. All of the girls developed their skills on the piano. So at family home evenings and whenever the family gathered together, there was a lot of harmonizing going on. All her life, she dressed like a lady and her hair was always perfect, wasn't it? Whether she was going to church or going visiting teaching, used to be. Her beautiful white hair, perfectly coiffed, was the way I will always remember her. Mary was a great wife and mother. Just look around you and you'll see what I mean. She loved and respected Drew with all her heart and being. 
She was a very devoted mother, teacher, exemplar. She was very proud of her family. I visited her often. Uh, and each time, the first item of discussion was usually who among you was planning marriage or having babies. After a while, I'd get a word in, but I didn't have much, many babies to talk about. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, she would then go into her, your individual activities and, and the achievements in music and art and your occupations. You're all so talented. It's just amazing. I cannot close without mentioning her talents in planning and organizing. We all know of her lifetime commitment to the DUP, including 10 years as international president, which enabled her to travel all over the world. I have been in the headquarters in Salt Lake several times and seen her interact with her employees. She ran a tight ship, but she was admired and respected by all of her associates. More important to me was her enthusiasm and organization skills demonstrated in planning many of our Abbott family reunions, especially here in St. George. And uh, she, along with my wife Susan, would buy all the groceries, make all the arrangements, and uh, I might add a little bit of entertainment for, with, for our ancestors. I know that you had some great Jensen family reunions also. In closing, I would like to quote our prophet Russell M. Nelson, who said, returning from earth to life in our heavenly home re requires passage through, not around, the doors of death. As seedlings of God, we barely blossom on earth we fully flower in heaven. Today, I'm sure she's out there with, uh, joined with other members of the family, adding many flowers to that beautiful garden. I know that Mary is enjoying a wonderful reunion with her family and hundreds of ancestors. Because of her extensive genealogy work, she knew most of them. And I, I'm kind of that way too. I, I, I feel like I would recognize them if I saw them. Uh, I have a testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some of that is attributable to Mary's influence. I know that God lives, that he hears and answers our sincere prayers. I know that Jesus is his, is, uh, performed the atonement which enables all of us to return to our Heavenly Father's presence, the greatest gift we could possibly have. I bear this testimony to you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our eternal Father in heaven, by the power of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, which I hold, I come and dedicate this grave that it may be a place of respite, repose, free from disturbances and problems, that it may hold the mortal remains of her beloved mother until such time as she is taken up and her body is rejoined with her spirit in the resurrection. At this time we pray for a special blessing on the family, the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. They will continue to have her her influence throughout their lives. They'll recognize the testimony which she bore throughout her life, throughout her actions, throughout her spirit. We might be able to enjoy peace and harmony with our, within our family. That we might be free from contention. We might be able to support each other in a manner which would please her and her husband, our father. We are grateful for her life, for her example, and all who have gone before. We are grateful for her posterity and all who have come after. These things we pray, grateful in our hearts, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, amen.
Thank you for your service today, gentlemen. It will take our grounds crew here approximately an hour, maybe an hour and a half before they complete the burial. It's a beautiful day. You're welcome to linger here for a few more moments if you would like. Um, and we do invite you to come back often, as was so eloquently stated in the dedica dedicatory prayer for the gravesite. This is now a, a very hallowed spot and sacred spot for your family. We would hope that you would come here often, uh, as often as time uh, will allow, and visit and uh, contemplate those ways that your dear loving mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and friend touched your life for good.